I want to show you something this evening. And most of you know the supposed cartoon family guy. We're living in a generation that has targeted these bunch of young people here tonight to absolutely destroy their life. And as Ethan said, the devil is a liar and his job is to take you to hell when you leave this world. That's his job. And uh, so tonight, you're going you're gonna to see something here in just a minute that I believe will help you. Now, what I want to do tonight is I'm going to show you how you are being targeted by the devil. The devil don't love you. You're not his friend. He don't care about you. He's not cool. Any, and anybody who works for him is not your friend. The drug dealer is not your friend. Trust me. Uh, the man who would get you in trouble, the boy who would try to talk you girls into sinning is not your friend. The girl who would try to talk you into sinning or doing something wrong is not your friend. Amen? Get that through your head tonight. Learn uh, what, what the Bible says about truth. Now, in this supposed cartoon, uh, you see it is absolute pure foolishness. This goes down to the lowest level of standards. Have you noticed today how the whole standards of morality have just dropped? I notice kids say words nowadays that we were, my mom wouldn't even let us say when I was growing up, and I wasn't even a Christian. And they say it now like it's nothing. Now you listen to me tonight. Our whole society, we think it's funny for somebody to talk dirty. And our society is just getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier and dirtier all the time. Now, the, the creator of this cartoon, you can go ahead and get those lights for me, Jimmy. Uh, the creator of this cartoon claims he is an atheist. And if, he, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in God. Ah, theist, no God. And uh, if you don't believe there's a God, then uh, why would you go around messing with him, talking about him and cussing him all the time? and making cartoons against him. If I really, really didn't believe there was a God, I wouldn't write books against him, or I wouldn't waste my time telling stuff about him and trying to get people not to believe him. Who cares? If ain't no God, just do whatever you want to. And then when you get real sick, blow your brains out. That's the best philosophy you could have if there's no God. But if there is a God, everything's different. Now, my opinion is the man, that's good, the man who uh, wrote the cartoon Family Guy in my opinion, had something bad happen to him when he was young. And he's mad at God. And all this stuff is a kickback against God. Watch what they're showing. They say, well, that's adult swim and that's, that's cartoons for adults. But you're kidding yourself if you think kids ain't watching them. Watch this tonight. I'm not going to have any audio, just a little short video. Some of this will make you mad and sick. But this is what our kids are being taught and shown now. The family guy is the little cartoon here. You see, it packages it in cute little characters. First thing you notice is that devil sign there, right there. See that? Right there. And that's, uh, in reality, that's a satanic sign. Them three fingers are turned down to deny the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the two up to represent the horns of Satan. That's what that's a, that baffinet satanic symbol. Of course, they put these people with four fingers. You know why they always got four fingers? You know who has four fingers? Animals, animal characters, and aliens. All, all those alien mixture of humans and alien demonic creatures have four fingers. Watch this. This is just a couple of pictures. I'm just going to take about two minutes of uh, video here and show you the old time cartoons were a lot different than what they are now. And then they got a little bit worse with the Simpsons and back in the day a few years ago. And now... This, this is the way they portray God to kids. Notice the first thing you see is he's an old, scary-looking, senile, crazy man that lives in the sky and just wild and crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, kids, that is not a picture of God. God don't look like that. God don't act like that. You're not going to like some of this, but it's so bad that God, how they, see how he's got four fingers? Here's where they saying that God, in this episode, created the universe not by a spoken word, but by his bodily gases. If you think that's funny, you're sick in your head. 
and you go around saying words like, we were not even allowed to say the words that you kids say for that all the time. Well, I wasn't even saved. It's a filthy, talking generation that we live in. You know what that's for? Look here, he's arm, watch God arm wrestling the guy here in this episode like it's cool and cute. And here's God trying to be as strong as this man, old timey, crazy man with sandals and a robe. Here's God trying to pick up girls in a bar. And he sits down beside this pretty girl and trying to pick her up. Now, now listen, y'all, come on, come on now. What, what, if, what if you made a video of Muhammad? Uh, well, what I've already showed you here tonight. Oh, my. You'd have World War III going on. You'd be called a hater. You'd be charged with hate crimes. They'd be saying, you can't do that. You're blaspheming other people. Really? Well, how does that come on every single night and nobody on the news network says a word? Even Fox News. I'll tell you why, brother. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We're living in a world that's controlled by Satan, people. Look at here, what God does. Look here, here he is with a sniper rifle. There he is getting a job as a receptionist in that episode. Here he is again, trying to pick up girls in bars, making God the Father a whoremonger, chasing women. Here he is coming on a little jet ski in the sky, being cool. Here's God in bed with his girlfriend, making phone calls probably to earth down just higher, brother. Uh, look at that. Look at that tonight. You know what that is? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Now, if you're sitting there saying, oh, I think it's just funny, Brother Danny, you're getting all bent out of shape on it. That just shows how backslid and how cold and how far our morals have sunk in this country tonight. Brother, if you'd have showed that in the church 50 years ago, it, people wouldn't have been able to sleep that night. That's where we've got to. That's our Father, God of the universe. Look here, what they're saying here tonight. As God has Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and look, the reason God don't want him to come to this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is because he has stacks of pornography there, hustler and playboy, that he's trying to keep the pleasure hid from Adam and Eve. That ought to make you feel bad if you look at pornography. That ought to make you feel bad if you look at dirty videos on your phone. That ought to make you feel bad if you sit up on the internet at net, uh, 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 internet at net after everybody's gone to bed and watch dirty stuff on that computer. Say my right there. Listen, people. Listen, we're living in a filthy generation. You say, well, I just can't quit looking at it, preacher. Now, you might need to get rid of your computer or your phone or both of them, TV and all. You know what? You say, oh, I don't take out. You know what the Lord told him one time? He said, if I can't quit sinning with that right hand, you better off to cut it off. Look at that. God drinking beer with one of those big chug a lug things, drinking a beer. And then here in the library, you see, notice uh, the all C and I you hear me preach about so much uh, on the back of the dollar bill. The book uh, by Richard Dawkins, isn't that what they put in this? Uh, that's the God delusion, the God delusion. That's uh, life and that anybody who believes in God. Here it says in this episode, it says, how are we going to help our first graders? And they said, burn everything that's harmful to God. And the first thing they throw in the fire is logic for first graders. Saying logic is harmful to our belief in God, so burn the book on logic. In other words, it's illogical to believe in God. Smart, educated people don't believe in God. That's what they're saying. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this. Uh, in, these, in this other uh, episode of this same cartoon, you got Jesus Christ there as a hippie throwing up that 666 sign. See that 666? That's not three-pointer. You see them sixes? All right, here's the one up. Of course, he has four fingers. Jesus Christ had five on both hands. But they make him a four-fingered mixture of an animal and something else. I don't know what. But look how they make Jesus look like some kind of weak, sissified, anemic sissy. And they always have the devil with these big muscles and he's a big, strong man and got a big, strong voice and make Jesus look like some kind of a weirdo like that. 
That's not the way the Lord Jesus Christ looked or acted. Here's Jesus in heaven, but all these other gods are in heaven too with a 666 sign. Uh, Zeus, uh, other, other, other uh, Greek gods and goddesses. Here Jesus, in this episode, Jesus works at a record store, at a rock and roll store, and got a job there part-time, the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonder why he's obsessed with Jesus. Here Jesus got in trouble and got in jail. There he is with a diaper on, going wild, shooting up a bunch of people and hurting them. Here's the devil uh, in, in hell with a vacuum cleaner and the hounds of hell. You hear so much about talking. Here's the one Christian in the series and they make, see how they make him look like a crazy, crazy Bible waving nut. There's Christianity according to our generation. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, boys and girls. Listen to me. Listen to me tonight. Uh, listen, you're, you're not a weirdo if you're a Christian. You're not, a, uh, you're not some kind of freak if you're a Christian. Christians are the smartest people on this planet. You're a wise young person that'll say, yes, I'll live for God, and yes, I believe the Bible. I don't care what they say at school. I don't care what they say down the street where I live. I'll take my stand for the Lord Jesus Christ and let this world do whatever they blessed want to do. Amen? Look at here, and I'm through this video. Watch this. The Christian, see the Holy Bible? I'm going to beat him over the head with it. That's the way they portray Christians, crazy people. Now, okay, Jimmy, you can get the lights. And I want you to look in your Bibles at Luke chapter number 2. That's family guy. Now I'm going to show you family ties. Family ties. Let's look at the only reference of Scripture in the whole Bible of Jesus Christ when he was a teenager. Actually, he was not a teenager. He was 12, just about to become a teenager. What did Jesus Christ do when he was your age? How many of you in here this evening are 11? If you're 11, raise your hand. There's one, there's one, there's one. How many are 12? Got any 12s? There's one, there's one, there's one. All right, 13, 13, okay. All y'all right in here? Now watch this. Let's see what Jesus did when he was your age. If you want to be have family ties, look at it. Luke chapter number 2, and I want you to look at this. Here's where he got lost in the crowd. His mother and daddy come looking for him. Look at verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And that's something. I'm not, I'm not through reading. Remember that. He was about his father's business. And he wasn't all about Joseph. My father in heaven. I told Ethan this evening, I said, If you're going to preach, find your place and pray. Get your Bible, go somewhere and pray. It's more important getting the man ready than it is the message ready. Getting the message ready is a lot easier than getting the man ready. And preaching is not like teaching. You can teach by just knowledge and saying stuff. Preaching is working, the Holy Spirit working with us and through us. And it's different, it's supernatural. And I told him that, and that's what God, Jesus said. He said, I must be about my father's business. Now watch this. Look at the rest of this scripture here this evening. Verse number uh, 50. All you kids looking at it? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. His parents didn't understand him. Is there any of y'all young people in here tonight that have ever just went in your room and said, my mama just don't understand? Well, his didn't either. He was God in flesh. And knew everything. It said they didn't understand him. You said, you guys call it, my mama, she just, mom don't understand. She's 100 years old. She don't know. And she, your mom was just like you, you little brat, not long ago. And you're, the, reason you're, the reason you think your mom don't understand is because your mom does understand and she's thinking ahead of you and ain't going to let you have your way all the time. Amen. You see, we know y'all are just as mean as we was or probably worse. And so that's what you, when we don't understand. We do understand, you just don't like it. Now, I'm not through reading. Verse 51, and he went down with them. He went down with them. Who's the them? His parents. And came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But Mary kept all these sayings in her heart 
and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. You want to see the perfect teenager? There he is. Three or four things about it, and we'll go. Jesus was the perfect teenager. If you want to how to be a, be a young person in 2017, look in the infallible, authorized, holy Bible. The Bible still will tell you how to act. You know who the smartest kid in here is? The smartest young person in here tonight is the one that says, I'm dumb. Let somebody teach me how to do. You're the smartest one in here. You know the dumbest kid in here tonight? The dumbest kid in here tonight is the one that says, I ain't listening to him. I don't do what I want to. You're the dumbest person in here. And you've and, uh, uh, you got a long way to go in the brain department. The smartest kid in here is the one that says, you know what? My mom and daddy's been here a long time. And they know more than I know. And I might not always like what they say, but I'm going to listen to them and obey as we see in just a minute. First of all, the Bible said he went with them. He went with them. The Holy Spirit said Jesus went with his mother and Joseph, his, uh, his uh, I guess, uh, paternal step-in uh, figure, earthly father in this world. Joseph was not his literal father. But he went with his parents. Jesus went with his parents. He's 12 years old. Here they go down here on Saturday night to get an ice cream. They ride and they ride their camels. I had to take these camels and go down to uh, uh, Dots Dario or somewhere. And uh, come down, what's that little place we got? Jack Frost. Uh, or they take down the Tasty Freeze down here. That little place over in Baldi's. And they pull them camels in there. And here's Jesus with his parents. You know, I went to school with a bunch of boys. And you know, they would have died before they'd have went anywhere with their mom and dad. I know kids that when their mama takes them to school, they say, let me off over here, mom. I'll walk. Because they, they are embarrassed for their friends to see them get out of the car from their mama. Now listen here, you little angels. Your mama works hard for you. And your daddy works. It ain't them kids at school buying your clothes and buying your food. It's that mama and that daddy and there's something wrong with a kid that's ashamed of their parents. Amen? I used to tell my guy, I said, he, he said, my old man and old lady's coming. I don't want to be around them. But you be, don't you ever call your parents old man and old woman. You know why? Because you'll probably get killed in a few years. That's what the Bible says. The Bible said, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the earth. You're not a weirdo if you say, uh, we're going, hey, I know a boy in school. This boy in school, we laughed at him. He, was, he just got 16 and he wanted to go on a date really, really bad. And he got him a girlfriend and he wanted to go on a date. And we, was all, we used to go hang out to this place in Marion all the time. Y'all don't remember, uh, most of you don't remember the old, uh, the, uh, where the uh, Japanese place. Where's Corey likes to go all the time? What's the name of that place? Huh? Yeah, I guess it's Norris. Out there, and man, everybody, that used to be some kind of like a burger joint or something. And everybody would go out there and park cars. Everybody. We'd park cars all around there, and all the guys would sit on the hood like this, and all the girls would go circling around like that. Hey, hey, hey. Round and around and around and around. Well, this guy, my friend, got him a date, had him a girlfriend. And his mama would not let him be in the car with that girl by himself. And word got out. They went to church. None of us went to church. And word got out that his mama was going with him on a date. And you hear that? You hear that? That's how strange that is. Ah! His mama! Sure enough, he had his permit and he just got his license and here he comes driving this big old green Chevrolet by along here that door over there around the Burger King. Uh, and he was driving and his girlfriend was sitting well there. Them big cars and you couldn't even reach each other like that. And his mom was sitting in the back seat. And we died laughing. We died. We went, everybody said, there he is. <laughs> Went to the movies, sat with his mama. Now going, to... <laughs> woo! But little did we know how stupid we was. Amen. Amen. 
You don't like that, do you? Bible said Jesus went with his parents. There is nothing wrong. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I didn't like. I didn't want my mom and dad going me nowhere. I borrowed the car. As soon as I got my first car, when I got my first car, I'm telling you, I took off down Hoppy Tom Holler. I thought I was Richard Petty, James Dean, Elvis, all wrapped up. I went, boom, flying down. I had a big old Chevrolet. That thing was about half, it was half white and half primer. It looked like a Chick-fil-A cow. That's what it looked like. Uh, and, and it was, I, I was driving that thing, and I thought I was bad news. But when I got saved... And I started preaching revivals. I'd say, Daddy, you don't go with me tonight? Me and my daddy would go across the mountain over there. And he'd go to church. And he'd sit there and listen to me preach. And then we'd stop and get something to eat on the way back. Something changed in my heart. I got to where I was glad I'd be around my daddy. Your mom and daddy ain't always going to be here, y'all. You're not always going to have them. You better spend time with them. You better respect them. You better honor your parents. Some of you right here, you've been getting this attitude against your mom and against your dad. Jesus went with them. Went with them. You say, boy, I hope my mom and daddy goes on vacation with my aunt. And uncle. I get to stay. That's where I got in trouble. I got in trouble when I talked my mom into letting me stay with my cousin while her and daddy went up north one, one, one summer. There's something about being out from under that mom and daddy that makes you get a little wild, don't it? You know every dirty, rotten, low-down thing I ever learned, I learned on the school bus or for some older boy at school or somewhere we went after school or during school. That's why I believe in Christian schools. And they ain't perfect. But I'm telling you, his parent, he went with his parents. Number two, the Bible said he was subject unto them. Whew. Jesus, God in the flesh, no sin in him, and obeyed his mother. I don't know how all that worked. I like to imagine it sometimes. Here's Jesus, seven, and eight, and nine years old. And out there in the carpenter shop, Jesus, would you hand me that saw? Yes, Dad. Here, saw, and he, he learned how to saw them two befores. He learned how to sand. His daddy was a carpenter. He worked 18 years with his hands. He wasn't a sissy. And here he, he was 12 years old when this happened, and the Bible said he is subject to his mom and his dad. The Bible says, children, that's you, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Let me encourage you, you better learn to do what your mom and dad said. Even when you think they're wrong, you even not even know they're wrong. That's when it's hard. That's when it's hard. Illustration. Here's Jesus. He's 12 years old. Mary comes out there one day and says, Honey, honey, would you do me a favor? Yes, mother. Would you go down to Mrs. Jones' house? Well, there's not really a Jew named Jones. Uh, would you go down, to, uh, down there to Abraham, to, uh, Hagar's house, and borrow me a, a bag of sugar? Now, he's God, and he knows everything. And he knows that Mrs. Hagar ain't even home. He'd say, Mama, she ain't, Mama, she's not even home. Honey, would you please go down there? But Mama, you don't. Say, uh-uh. He grabs his thing and goes down there, all the way down there. He had his Fitbit on everything, like I do. Walked a mile down there to her house. Knocked on the door. Comes back. She wasn't home, Mother. I don't know how much he used his God powers. I'd like somebody to explain that to me. But he was God, and he knew everything, but he's a human. He's all God and all man. He knew his mama didn't know what she's talking about, but he obeyed her anyway. Y'all remember that? Can you remember that? Because sometimes you think, Mama, I... Uh, you say, why do I have to do what my mama said? Because she's the big person, you're the little person. Amen? Your punishment for being young you got to go to school. I told him over a minute ago, your punishment for being old, you got to work. So it gets worse as you go on. 
Don't, don't think it's going to get better. All right, here's Jesus. He comes in one day. Mom, can I spend the night with Johnny? Johnny who? Johnny? My cousin, Johnny the Baptist. <laughs> it was his cousin. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. He's 12 years old. Mom, can I spend a night with Johnny? Johnny who? Johnny the Baptist, my cousin. She said, honey, I'm not sure about, how do I know what you'll be doing? Mom, the Lord said there's none greater born of women than him. If I can't hang around him, who in the world can I hang out with? But son, I worry about you when you're gone. Mama, it's, he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Ain't that what they say? He's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's a good. You think Jesus did that? You think he argued and argued and argued? But ma, but ma, no, but ma, no, but ma, no. God, go to your room. And that puts her up there pretty high, don't it? I'll whip you, God. <laughs> uh, she, hey, listen, that's Mary. That's Jesus Christ. He obeyed his mom and dad. Even when they didn't know what they was talking about. All him and John was going to do is pray and write the Bible. That's all they was going to do, pray and write the Bible. Mom said, no. Mama... He's filled the Holy Ghost. Do you not know that I'm God and I can't sin? I don't know how much she knew about that. How about, I don't know if that ever come up like that. But I'll tell you one thing. The Lord was a subject to his mother. If your mama says you can't go watch a movie, then shut your little mouth and say, yes, ma'am, I, I know I can't have everything I want, at least you ain't in hell, shut up. You got a good Christian mom. You ought to thank God, you ought to thank God that you got a mom and daddy that cares about where you're at at 11 o'clock at night and who you're with. And by the way, your mom and daddy does have a right to know where you're at and they do have a right to know who you're with and they do have a right to know where you went and where you I think they ought to put a tracker on your phone. You done learned all them tricks. You leave your phone over at somebody's house where you said you was going to be. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, but the Lord knows where you're at, you little crook. The Lord knows. The Lord knows. Number three, the Bible said he increased in wisdom and stature. Mary said, Jesus, what kind of music are you listening to? Take them earbuds out. Pull, pull that thing out. So, well, Mom, I'm just playing this game. But, honey, don't you know that's the devil's way of getting rock and roll in you, even though we don't allow it. All them games have got rock and roll and all the music's got roll. The devil's smart, and that's the way he's getting it in you. Don't you see that? But it, don't, it ain't no fun if it's quiet. Jesus. Yes, ma'am. I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine him doing that, but he might have. I doubt it. He increased in wisdom and in stature. That means, what does stature mean? Your stature, like he was this big, and the next time you see him, he was this big, the next time you see him, he was this big, the next time you see him, he was this big, and he finally got to 5'10". Uh, I'm 5'9", I'm about an inch taller than me, Song of Solomon, 5'10". Uh, and uh, he finally got up there, around there. Increased in wisdom and stature. You know what some of y'all's problem is? You increased in stature. But your wisdom is still way... Some of you girls, Lord have mercy, you got a grown woman's body and a five-year-old brain. That's right. All of these blondes with roots. Boys too. Then that blonde, she come out and he said, one of them blondes said, look at that dog with one eye. And the other one went... See, that's the kind of people you are, you, you teenagers, young people. You've got to understand, hey, I don't know everything. You know what I think? I think the biggest danger for a girl is when a boy starts talking sweet to her and she falls for it because she wants to hear that so bad. 
I mean, every girl's got this Cinderella complex, and they want some guy to tell them how beautiful they are and how wonderful they are. Oh, my oh, God. And guys are led by the devil to say just the right words. They said that same thing to the last 15. And you thought you was the first and only. Go talk to his ex-girlfriend. He said that same thing to me. I believe he gave me that same line. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he said, honey, what would I, ch if there's one thing you could change about me, what would it be? Your last name. Ah! Oh, please. I mean, I mean, he told that to the last 15 he tried to seduce. That's a bunch of bull. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. You know what you girls ought to do? Say, God, keep me away from them idiot boys. And boys, y'all pray the same prayer. <laughs> y'all pray the same prayer. Lord, keep me away from those wicked women. Say amen right there. Man, many strong men have been slain by her. Remember Alfalfa and Darla and all them, buddy? She come on. Oh boy, down you go. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, you better pray. God will help you to increase in wisdom and stature. People watched him. He increased in favor, number four, with God and man. With God and man. People watched him. And people, I, I think people come in and say, well, you know that little, that little fellow over there, the son of Mary and Joseph the carpenter? That's a special little guy. I don't know. I believe the Lord's got his hand on that boy. That was an understatement, wasn't it? The Lord had his hand on him, brother. And he got up when he was 30, and he was baptized. That's when the Holy Spirit in him became, his ministry began. He was always the Son of God. But when he's little, 14, 15, 16, 17, he had normal stuff just like y'all go through. He was probably made fun of. People probably bullied him. Same stuff y'all go through. You ain't no different than nobody else. But the Bible said he sinned not. He sinned not. And the smartest thing you could ever do, if you ever listen to anything I said, the smartest thing you can do is throw your whole life in the church and God and the Bible and live for the Lord, honor your parents, and get in here head over heels. I'm telling you. God, give us some young people. We got a lot of young people in here tonight. Probably 50 or 60 in here tonight. And I'm going to tell you something. I read about this story. Listen, I'll tell you this and I'm through. Several years ago, there's a girl got her license and they let her drive, I think, for a year. And when she's 17, they bought her a brand new uh, Trans Am. Pontiac Trans Am. I don't think they make Trans Ams no more. It's years ago. Brand spanking new Pontiac Trans Am. Everybody wanted one back back in the day. And she drove that thing to school. And she parked it. And the school had a parking lot that was across the road. And the school rule was that all the students had to park in that parking lot and lock the car and go across the street and go to the school. And once you come across that street, you could not for any reason go back across there until school was over the afternoon. That was school policy. Well, she come that day, and everybody was talking about it. Man, have you seen that car? Gosh, have you seen it? It's beautiful. Oh, my goodness, you lucky dog. I love it. I love it. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. So at lunch... There's three or four boys, a couple girls, run across the road and took it and looked at that car. Oh, my goodness, that thing was bright. So they was looking at it, and they was going around like that, and they was looking at it and said, oh, God, that's the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Can we see inside it? She opened the door, that leather trim, you know, and that wood grain and all that, that gear shift and everything. I said, Kyle, you're the luckiest girl I've ever seen in my life. And they, they got in it and sat down. And then you know what the next one somebody said. What'd they say? That's right. All of you got it. Let's just take it around the block. She said, all right. And they all piled in there, five teenagers, I think. And she cranked that thing, and they come out of the school parking lot. She was trying to show off and stomp that thing down, took off the road like that. And it went flying down this street. She didn't know what she's doing. Know where she's at. And she come across 
they had uh, one of them guardrails across the road where the, it was like a dead end. They'd chopped that road off, put Interstate 10 across through there. She come flying down through there, hit, turned that curve about 70 miles an hour. And they said she didn't see it and slammed on the brakes and hit that guardrail like that and that thing flipped over right on, the, in, on its top out in the middle of the interstate. And a tractor and trailer come flying down through there and slapped that thing and knocked every one of them a hundred feet down the, down the road and every one of them died just like that. Just like that. Five teenagers gone. And they all thought, we're just going to disobey a little bit. We're not really going to do nothing bad. Just take a little spin around the block. That's how quick it can happen, y'all. Girls, did you know you can do something in five minutes that you pay for the rest of your life? You know that, don't you? You can make a mistake in one night that you'll pay for forever just because you decided to disobey your parents or God. You going to be some fool family guy? It takes a low-down, low-moral, wicked person to put out stuff like I showed you about God. And that's what this society that we live in thinks about God. Or you want to be like Jesus. It's your choice, you know. It's your choice. Let's stand, let's stand by our heads for prayer.